What Judas did really in the grand scheme of sin was no worse than what Peter did. Really? Peter denied Christ. Judas denied Christ. So again, that germination process has to be tended to what is growing in your life. Sin is viral. Betrayal is viral. Seriously. A house full of people got a cold, it's going to go around. Sin is the same way. Yeah, why yeah, my kid, yeah, yeah, why yeah, would happen to my true. kids? Yeah, well, they got that virus somewhere. <laughs> now, this is the deal. I heard, I heard a, a pastor say one time, when my kids grow up and I'm teaching them what's right and, and walking with the Lord and, and they get grown and do something, something got to be wrong with me. I said, wow. I told him, I said, man, that was one of the most arrogant things I've ever heard. We can keep viruses out of our home. The virus of sin. Who virus? Yeah. But people are going to go out there and might see it. And I said that to point this out and I'll move on. Is that betrayal, as with Judas, it's viral. Think about this. It entered into Judas' heart. Judas did it. Christ sent him, said, hey, go do what you got to do. Judas showed up at the garden. All of these things led to him being hung on a tree. Judas is, the process of Judas betraying Christ is a perfect example of what destroys us okay. it's planted and it ends in death mm. that's it pl is planted it ends in death so again the root of sin obviously is controlled but our hearts are set on betrayal now we don't have to get to the free will discussion <laughs> we had, we, we had to get the, that's a big one that's a monster that I refuse to bite off right now is a free will discussion in that discussion are we predestined to do this and do that uh, you know that's uh, i'm not gonna go there ne uh, the the third point and i only have four is are you asking god the right questions are you asking him the right questions this is beautiful and simple you have not because you ask not or you be ha or you have or be, or you ask but you ask amiss most often when we're praying to God and our prayers doesn't line up with his will, we are asking God to betray his righteousness. Oh. Think about that. When we pray something that's outside of God's will, we're asking God, Lord, betray your righteousness. Why not just ask him? Don't say, Lord, I, you know, uh, Lord, I, I, I see this, and Lord, I know this is going to build your kingdom like, the, like uh, two sons of uh, Aaron burning strange fire. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yep. We're asking God, not asking him the right questions, just asking him to betray his righteousness and his holiness. It is. Those people ask Jesus to do miracles, and that was said the best. Those people are asking Jesus to do miracles that, that the, the Father didn't want him to do was asking him to betray the righteousness of his Father. You have not. Because you ask not, or you ask amiss. Ananias and Sapphira came in with some money asking the apostles to betray the righteousness of God. Yeah. Are you asking God the right questions? Not for the right things. Ooh. The right questions. Asking him the right questions lead to the right things. Always, without it. How do I ask him the right question? The first question is, not, Lord, what do you want me to do is, who did you form me in the womb to be? Mm. Okay. That's the root. That is the root. Who did you form me in the womb to be? Once you ask and then that's answered, everything falls into line from there. The church with this whole control thing, with pastors trying to remove a biblical hierarchy from the church so they can be just the local yokels, mm. is betraying the righteousness of God. What that's saying, no, there's not apostles, of, there's not prophets, and, and apostles and prophets are mentioned, you know, collectively 60, 83 times in the New Testament, pastors like 15, and that doesn't mean one is more important Preach. than the other. It just means God has hierarchy. The Godhead, angels, the Bible says, this is beautiful, Jesus made a little lower than the angels. Like Adam. And in the church, apostles, prophets, pastors, evangelists, teachers, and, and pastors do have that threefold thing. 
They do. So anyway, the church is messed up because we, we've asked God and we've betrayed his righteousness. Last point. When the betrayal is complete, the impact is immediate. When the betrayal is complete, the impact is immediate. It isn't about us saying something against God and dropping dead or God striking us down. It's not mm -hmm. about that. Every step we take away from God alters where he was trying to lead us. Now, does God restore? Mm -hmm. Yes. That's, again, that's not the question. The question is, God, where are you going to restore me to? Oh, wow. That's good. Mm -hmm. Solomon was, the, I believe anyway, the greatest example of that. Solomon was on the path. Israel prospered. Solomon was more interested in political connections, marrying all those women, than he was in the righteousness of God. So, could Solomon have been restored? Yes, but where would he have been restored to? David is another great example. David was restored when he repented, but where was he restored to? What am I saying? David planted a seed, had germinated, Turned into this big mess. Boom. His son Absalom ends up dead, which was probably the biggest heartbreak of his life. I told somebody that. They, it caused great offense with them. Well, yeah, I took it to the Lord. And, 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 and I said to him, he's a church leader. I said, you're never going to be who God called you to be. Why? I said, not because you screwed up. Because you knew what you were doing. You planted, you plotted, you leaded his people. Your charge, your calling is, is higher than others. Not that God loves you more. Yeah. And you did it anyway. I said, your life is never going to be the same. They, they kind of went off the deep end on me. God restores what the canker worm has eaten. But where does he restore you to? There's some things, and Sister Delanda and Sean know this, that they can do that's going to impact your children for the rest of their lives. Mm -hmm. Whether they be positive or whether they be negative. Mm -hmm. The hard part is, do we rejoice in his judgment? <laughs> Remember we talked about that? Do we rejoice in his judgment? We know it's impact. That's going to impact us immediately. But can we rejoice in judgment? I'm not saying every little mistake takes us off. I'm not saying that. I'm saying with church leadership, there's some things we only get one shot at. One shot. And if we keep walking down that path, that impact is going to be immediate. We're never going to be who he called us to be. And uh, what, what is that guy? Ted Haggard. Mm -hmm. Howard Spring. Mm -hmm. That guy is struggling right now. And mm -hmm. he's trying to, you know, go back and build the church. He's never going to get back there. He's never going to get back there. Ever. He was blessing a lot of people. He really was. I listened to his message. A little soft for my taste. Amen. A little soft. <laughs> Called most of false doctrine a couple times where everybody slips up. <laughs> but I believe he was doing big things. I really do. He was. He was doing big things. Uh, However, Peace. he's never going to be, again, what God sent him to be. We, and I'll close with this. Don't get in too deep. Deal with that soil. Don't let that stuff germinate, man. Don't let it germinate. Mm -hmm. Cast it out. Repentance is always meat. And God will restore. But restore to what? Peter was a great example. Jesus, Jesus got up three days later to tell my brethren that I'll go before them in Galilee. Sure. Peter did something very terrible. But Peter held on. And because Peter held on, we see he did big things for God. Judas was the exact opposite. He didn't hold on. Mm -hmm. Who knows what Jesus would have told him? Jesus, this had to be. Wow. All you've done is accomplish the purpose of the kingdom of heaven. Your sins are forgiven you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Sure. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Sure. Hallelujah. For a second, I was wondering what was the nutrient-rich soil of, uh, of the seed of betrayal. 
and it, this unbelief. So let me ask you this, and this this uh this nutrient rich rich soil mm -hmm. is it is it is this to say that we have not two hearts, but uh, that the, the soil could either be unbelief or surrender, depending on what seed is planted in it. Always, uh, and, and that that soil, I tell you, okay. that is what we are, is soil. All our soil in our lives is, is who God. Everything that springs from that soil has to be who God called us or formed us in the womb and brought us forth out of the matrix to be. Mm -hmm. The soil is who He formed okay. our, our lives, who He formed us to be. Okay. It's gonna be weeded over or it's not. Okay. That's what we are. If you think about it, okay. one plants, one waters, God gets the increase. Paul talked about soil four or five times. And think it not and think it not strange. Think it not strange that we were created from the dust of the ground. Think it not. That's created from nothing. That's what that is all about. You were created from nothing.